What's up, people? It's Dev Sage here, and it's been a while. It's been a couple months since I posted last, but hopefully I'll be posting a lot more often. So look out for that. But in this video, I'll be going over five tips to increase your productivity as an engineer. So tip number one you can do to uh, increase your productivity is to prioritize. So every day, at the beginning of the day, what you can do is you can make a list of everything that you want to accomplish for that day. It doesn't have to be a big list. It could be just maybe six or seven things. But once you have that list of things, you need to go through that list and you need to assign levels of importance to each of the items. This is called triaging. It's the same process that you might see, for example, in a, a hospital. You know, you have all of these different kinds of patients coming in and they have all different kinds of issues. Somebody might just have a simple cough, but another person might have just been shot three times in the shoulder, right? So what the hospital does is they, they treat the person with the, the gunshot wounds with a higher priority than the person that just has the cough, right? Uh, it's that managing of priorities and you can take that same concept and apply it to your everyday tasks. So basically you'll be splitting your tasks into these different groups or levels of priority. And I mean, you, you really don't need any more than say two or three levels. You could say, for example, have a priority one level and these are the tasks that you need to get done by the end of the day. These are the highest priority. Then you can have priority two tasks, which these tasks, you know, it would be nice if I can get these done, but it's definitely not the end of the world if I push them back to say tomorrow. Um, and then you can have priority three tasks, which, you know, if I get to these, great. If not, no big deal. And that's pretty much it. So at this point, you know, you know everything that you need to do, and then you know what you need to do first. But instead of you know going through your day just responding to fires, you know only addressing tasks you know as they come up or as you feel that you need to, you can be more focused and more intentional about the things that you do throughout your day. So productivity method number two is pomodoro. If you couldn't tell, that's Italian. The pomodoro or pomodoro technique is a time management method developed by Francesco Cerio back in the 80s. So this technique involves taking some body of work and then tackling that body of work using a timer. Um, so the main idea of this technique is that for some time interval, traditionally 25 minutes, you focus on your work and then you, you, your head's down, you're, you're hard, you're going at it, you're focused for 25 minutes. And then at the end of that 25 minutes, you take a five minute break. And then after that break is over, you get back to 25 minutes of hard work. And then you take another five minute break. And then you repeat, 25 on, five off. 25 on, five off. So each of these 25 minute blocks of work is called a Pomodoro. After about three or four Pomodoro cycles, you get to take one longer break, say 30 or 45 minutes. And then you just kind of repeat the process from there. So the word Pomodoro is Italian and it literally translates to tomato. Uh, so the guy that developed this technique, Francesco, uh, he developed this technique and he had a kitchen timer, right? But his kitchen timer was the shape of a tomato. He had, uh, he had a tomato kitchen timer. And that's what kind of inspired him to name this technique the Pomodoro technique. So this technique is good because it, it helps you to get into this structured habit of getting work done while still being able to take breaks and not burn yourself out, right? Because, you know, we might have a habit of, you know, just I have all this work to do. I'm just gonna go heads down for eight hours straight, seven hours straight. And that's like, wow. I mean, you, you get the work done, but you wouldn't feel, you might not feel good after it. Cause I mean, you'd be burned out probably. But this technique allows you to tackle your work for 
25 minutes and you have five minutes of rest. 25, five, 25, five. And then you're not burned out at the end of the day and then you still have gotten work done and you can kind of feel better about yourself and you can feel good that you got work done and then kind of motivates you to keep keep doing this. And you know, the, the time intervals, you know, 25, five, it, it doesn't have to be that specifically. That's just kind of a guideline. You could say if you wanted to do 15 on and then uh, five off or, or 30 on and five off, you can adjust as you need to. But it's just the overall idea of, you know, going hard for a long amount of time and then going off. It's kind of like, kind of like, Oh, weightlifting, right? I mean, you, you go on for a certain amount of time, you go hard while you're at it, and then you take a break. Like you can't get on the weight, you can't get on the uh, the, the chest press and then just do it like eight hours. You can't do that for an hour. You have to take a break or else you're gonna hurt yourself, right? So it's, it's the same concept. And there are a lot of different tools out there that can help you with this. Like for example, there are Chrome extensions. There's a Chrome extension that I've used in the past, I think it's called uh, Marinara. So it, it's pretty much uh, the Pomodoro timer. And then, you know, you hit it, it runs for 25 minutes and it lets you know once that 25 minutes is expired and it lets you know, okay, start your break. You can do whatever you want on your break. You come back and you just hop back on it. It's, it's very neat. I'll probably link it down in the description so you can download it. So tip number three of increasing your productivity is to block out distractions. Yes, block out distractions. Ultimately, the more time you spend on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, just browsing the internet, the less time that you have, you know, working and, and being productive, right? So it's, it's good to be able to cut out distractions when you can. Uh, for example, you know, if you, if you can, you know, turn your phone off while your head's down working. Or I know some people, you know, depending on your situation that might not be feasible, at least maybe consider turning it on do not disturb or, or silent. Um, and you know, only check it during your rest modes, your, your, your off periods. Also for people that like listening to music when they work like me, like I, I prefer to have something playing in the background while I'm doing work. What I would do is I might have like a YouTube or Spotify playing music in one tab and I would be doing all my work in all my other tabs and that was fine but uh, one of the problems that I, that I would run into is that once in a while you know Spotify might get caught in an ad and I didn't want to hear or, 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 or YouTube would start playing some random weird video that I wasn't expecting and I'd have to go and switch tabs to go and you know find you know re kind of reset myself like let me find a, a good video a, a better playlist to kind of reset myself and put myself back in the zone uh so that was that that switching tabs kind of just threw me off it's, it was distracting you know i would be working and then something would happen i just got to break my whole focus of concentration so it, that's that's cool you know youtube spotify or whatever but one tool that that really helped me is is uh there's a tool called Rainy Mood. Like I think it's rainymood.com, which is basically a, a, a soundboard of these different ambient sounds. Like for example, like waves in the background or, or crackling fire or, or like crickets or something. And you can basically play these tones. They're like these long running tones and they kind of loop over and over and over. And it kind of like sets a mood, right? It kind of puts you in a mood like, oh, wow, I can just listen to crackling fire while I'm just programming or, or, and the cool thing about it is, is you can, you can, you can combine the sounds, right? So you can have maybe a crackling fire with the waves, with the crickets or with some wind or some white noise or something like that. And so I, th I found that to be kind, kind of soothing. You know, I didn't have to go and keep switching tabs or, you know messing with something and it wasn't distracting and it satisfied my need of having something to kind of listen to while i work so like i said i think that's called rainymood.com so check it out tip number four when it comes to increasing your productivity is take a shower uh yeah t take a shower well what do you mean yeah what do you mean what do i mean what do you mean? What do I mean? What do you mean? I mean, take a shower, be clean, dress nicely. In my experience, 
if you smell good, if you look good, and you'll feel good, right? Um, and if you put on some nice professional clothes on top of that, you ultimately feel more professional. I think it's a psychology thing. That feeling of professionalism, you know, when you, when you get dressed nicely, uh, you look good, you smell good, you feel good. I think it can help boost your motivation to be productive for that day. I, I wouldn't get in the shower in the morning, you know, get cleaned up, put on some nice clothes. I wouldn't just jump back in the bed and just slouch around all day. No, I, I look too good. I feel too important at the moment to just slouch around all day. I, I have to do something, I feel. I, I, I have to go and, and, and be, I don't know, do something. Something has to be done. I can't have just done all this for no reason, right? So it's that kind of mindset that dressing nice and feeling good and smelling good it, it, that it puts you in. I, and I don't know if this is the same for women as it is for men. Maybe it's just a guy thing or, or maybe, maybe it's just a me thing. I don't know. Maybe it's not psychology. Maybe I'm just psycho. Maybe that's it. But either way, uh, I, I encourage you to, to try it and let me know how it works for you. Leave, like come back and, and leave a comment. So tip number five in increasing your productivity as an engineer is ask for help. So in the past, one of my biggest productivity blockers was that I would get stuck on a problem and I would get stuck on a problem. I would hit a wall and instead of asking for help from somebody that might have already solved this problem, I would say, you know, I got it. I got it. I feel like I'm right here. I'm right here. If I just keep digging a little bit, I can get it. I can get it. Whereas, you know, I would spend probably 30 minutes on a problem that somebody has already solved or encountered in the past and I could have just asked them about it. And even if I asked somebody and they didn't know the answer, they'd probably be able to point me in the direction of who would, right? If you're stuck on a problem, there's a lot of time that could be saved if you would just reach out and ask for help. You would save time and you would ultimately get more work done. So anyways, guys, that's my five tips for increasing your productivity as an engineer. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope they're helpful. Let me know if they helped you out down in the comment section. Make sure to hit the like button, hit the like button, hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and peace.